In today's video, we're going to talk about the length and distance nodes in Unreal and in Unity. Let's get going. So the first thing that we're going to do today is I'm going to explain what the length and distance nodes do and what they are. And then I'm going to show you three examples of how to use length and distance in a shader. So first of all, it's important to know that length and distance basically give you the same result. So if you use a length node or you use a distance node, you're going to get the length or distance of something as the output. And the way that you determine uh, which of these nodes you're going to use is by what you're starting out with. Notice that the length node has one input, so it's expecting one thing to be input into it, and the distance node has two inputs. And so, well, what's the difference between length and distance? Well, what the length node does is it takes a vector or a line and it measures the length of the line. That's why it only has one input because a line is a single object or a single thing that you're plugging in. So for example, you could give it uh, a line that goes from uh, the location of the camera to the location of your current pixel in the scene, or you could get it a line uh, that extends out from your object, uh, from the origin of the object to uh, the current pixel that you're rendering. You're giving it a line that you have. The distance node measures the difference between, or the distance between two points. And so that's the reason it has two inputs here is because you're giving it two points of data. So you might give it uh, the pixel that you're currently rendering and the location of the light source in the scene. Or you might give it the object's location that you're currently rendering and the pixel that you're currently rendering. You're gonna give it two points and it's gonna measure the distance between those two points. But I think you understand now why I said that the results of these two is gonna be the same. With one, you're measuring the distance of a line, and with the other, you're measuring uh, the distance between two points. And the result is gonna be a number that represents how far those two points are apart or how long that line is. All right, I hope that's understood and, and it's clear enough. Uh, now I'm gonna show you three examples of cool ways to use these uh, to create effects in shaders. In this first example, I'm showing you a method of using the distance or the length node to measure the scene depth. So here I have the camera position and the uh, position of the current pixel that I'm rendering and I'm using the distance node to measure the distance between the two. So basically, how far away is the pixel that I'm currently rendering from the camera? And then I divide the result by five to get me uh, kind of the, the depth range that I'm looking for. What this means is I have a maximum of five meters. So at the camera, the pixel's gonna be zero or black, and then five meters away, it's gonna be white or a value of one. So if I wire this in to uh, my master stack here and save it, now you can see that my sphere is showing kind of a gray color. And as I get closer to the sphere, it gets darker. And then as I zoom out, you can see that as I get about five meters away, it goes to full white uh, and even brighter than that beyond. So this is a method measuring the distance between the camera and the position that I'm currently rendering to get the scene depth. So I've got darker colors where uh, positions are closer to the camera and brighter colors where they're further away. Now I can also use the length node to achieve the same effect. And remember, as I described, the length node needs you to give it a line or a vector. The way that you create a vector, if you have two positions, is you subtract one from the other. So here I've got my camera position and my current pixel position, and I subtract the camera position from the current position, and that gives me a vector 
from the camera to my current pixel. So then I can take that vector that I've just created and pass it into length. And as you can see, when I connect these things up, this shader, I'll save it here and let it recompile. This shader is going to give me exactly the same result as the version using the distance node. So here using distance, I'm measuring the distance between the two points. And here using length, I'm measuring the length of the vector formed uh, by subtracting the position from the camera's position. So pretty cool. There's an example of using uh, distance or length to get scene depth. Here's that same example in Unreal. I have my camera position and my absolute world position. And I measure the distance between them. In Unreal, to get the same result, I have to divide by 10,000 because Unreal's base unit is centimeters uh, instead of meters, like in Unity. But uh, what we're doing is the same thing. And you can see that as I get farther away from the sphere, it turns brighter and brighter. And as I zoom into the sphere, it gets darker and darker until I go to black. So here I'm measuring the distance between the camera position and the world position. And here I'm forming the camera vector and then measuring the length. And you can see when I connect these together, I'm getting the same result here. Darker and then brighter when the object is closer. All right, let's take a look at another example. Here's an example where I, let's say I have some foliage, a tree maybe, or uh, something that I want to wave in the wind. Let me just disconnect a few things and we'll build this up a little at a time. So here you can see I have my local position, which is the, the position of the object in local or object space. And if I pass this into color, you can see that my pivot point is right here in the middle of the plane. Uh, let's talk about this part down here first. What I want to do is animate this plane waving back and forth in the wind. And we know that anytime we want to do animation, we need to use time. And what I'm doing here is taking the sign of time, which is basically going to give me an animated wave moving back and forth. Then I multiply that by 100 uh, just to get uh, a movement of about a meter in either direction. And then I plug that into my G, which is the same as my Y component. So I'm animating the, the Y component of the vertices. So let's, let's skip this mask here for a minute. I'm just going to wire this directly into Y and then wire this into my world position offset. And what this is going to do is just animate my plane back and forth. So I've got my plane reacting to the wind, but right now it's not rooted to the ground. It's just like the whole thing is moving. And I want to be able to only move the top portion. Let's say this is a tree. I want to only be able to animate the top of the tree. And then as it goes down, I want to animate it less. And so what I need to do is measure the distance from the base of the tree to the top, and then use that as a mask to mask out my movements so that what's happening at the base uh, uh, is nothing. And then as I go higher up the tree, I get more and more movement. All right, so here you can see I'm taking the local position excluding offsets, so not counting the animation that I'm doing here. And then I'm taking uh, the Z component of that, or just the height, and because my pivot point is here in the middle, I need to subtract a value of 135. Now, let's go ahead and wire this distance into base color and see what we get here. So <laughs> immediately we get something super duper bright um, because again, we're, we're dealing with centimeters again. So we need to multiply that by 0 0.001. So let's, let's wire this in and see what we get now. And you can see, actually, let me just pause this for a minute. Now we have a nice gradient that goes from black at the bottom to white at the top. And I've done this by measuring the distance uh, from in the Z 
uh, from this point at negative 135. Uh, if I were to make this zero, now you can see that my distance is zero right in the middle because that's where the origin of my object is or my object's pivot point. That's why I'm subtracting 135 centimeters um, because that's how long it is from that middle down to the bottom of the plane. So once I have the distance, I multiply that by 0 0.001 to kind of get a better range because otherwise it goes from zero to one right there, right at the bottom and then it's one all the way up. Uh, and now, so I can use this as a mask to mask off the movement that I'm getting here. So uh, before we were seeing this plane animate like this, but if I take this gradient that I've created and multiply my movement by the gradient, then I'll only get movement at the top of my plane uh, and not at the bottom, because here at the bottom, my movement is getting masked off by this, this gradient. Now, there's an easier way that I could do this with just this plane, but if this were a tree, this would be a pretty decent way of going about it, because uh, I'm measuring the distance from the base of the tree all the way up to the top, and then applying animation and getting more animation at the top than at the bottom, uh, because of this distance measurement mask that I've created. Here's the same effect in Unity. I'm taking the object's position and splitting it into its individual X, Y, and Z components here. And then I'm bringing in the sine of time and multiplying it by uh, 0 0.35 uh, just to kind of slow it down a little bit. Otherwise, it, uh, it animates a little bit too far here in the preview window. Um, and then I'm taking the distance um, between negative 0.5 and the Y component of the position. So this is giving me the up direct, uh, the up direction. The reason I'm using negative 0.5 here is again, my uh, pivot point is right in the middle of the plane. So if I type zero here, you can see uh, now it's, uh, it's black here in the center. So I have to offset that pivot by negative 0.5 to go down to the bottom of the plane. All right, so uh, measuring that distance gives me this nice gradient from black to white at the bottom to the top of the plane. Then I can use that to multiply by uh, my uh, animated time value here. And then I add that value to the position, to the X position of the plane. So the higher I go on the plane here, the more um, movement I'm getting because I'm multiplying it by this distance value, which is white at the top and black at the bottom. Then I combine my positions back together, the X, the Y, and the Z, and pass those into the vertex position on my master stack. So I'm able to control the uh, amount of vertex animation I'm getting here based on the position, uh, the distance from this position that I've specified. All right, let's take a look at one more example. In this last example, I'm using the distance node to create a fake animated light source. If we take a look at here, you can see that, uh, again, I'm using the sine wave to, to uh, do a little bit of animation here, um, but I'm creating a fake light source that's inside my object. I don't know why you'd wanna do this, but <laughs> it's just something cool that you can do with the distance node. Uh, so let's take a look at what's going on here. Here is my local position node. And so I'm taking uh, the position in, in object space or local space that I'm currently rendering. And then I'm finding the position between that and this point down here that I've created. This is just an artificial point uh, with a position of zero for the X and the Z. And then the Y are... Yeah, and the Y is uh, animated. So I've got my time node here multiplied by 0 0.2 to control the speed. And then I'm moving the, the value back and forth with a sine wave and then multiplying by 400 to control the distance. And so what this gives me is a point that's moving back and forth in Y. And then I take the distance uh, of those values. Uh, now, 
what this gives me is a, a point that's black in the center. And as I move away from it, further away from that point, uh, I get a brighter value. And so I have to saturate the value, invert it, and then use a power node to control the contrast so that I get this result. So for example, if you if we take a look at this step here, if I just wire this saturate directly into emissive, what we see that is that this point that's inside my sphere uh, is actually black because closer to this animated point that I've created, I get black values and then the further away, the, the greater the distance, uh, the greater the value that I measure. And so I have to saturate my value and use the one minus node to invert it so that close to the point I get a bright value and then the further away that I get, the darker it gets. So now I've got this effect where inside the object, uh, I've got an animated imaginary point moving around and it appears that the point is creating light because I'm measuring and getting darker values the further away from that point that I am. Anyway, if you want to create an effect where you've got this crazy looking light inside your object, uh, this is one way that you could do it using the distance node in the shader. Okay, so we took a, a look at a bunch of examples. We took a look at the way to measure the distance from the camera and get a scene depth value. Uh, we took a look at a way to animate uh, an object based on its uh, height value and measuring the height of the object. And we also use the distance uh, or length node to uh, create a fake light source inside an object. Pretty cool. So the distance node or the length node, we're measuring uh, how far away two points are from each other or how long a vector is. And then we can use that to create all kinds of cool effects. So that about wraps things up for this week's video. Thanks for watching. Next week, we're gonna take a look at floor, ceiling, and round nodes. And I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of cool things that you can do with those. So be sure to come back next week. And until then, have a great week, everybody.